Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Another one of those miscellany days today. I've got four whites, uh, four different countries, um, even more than four different grape varieties. We've got quite a few to pack in. First wine today is made with that well-known grape variety, Villana. Yes, of course, you all know it, don't you? Um, it, this, this is a wine from Crete. Island of Crete, um, it says Appalachian of origin, Pisa of high quality. So, if it must be of high quality, do I need to taste it? Well, let's have a sniff. So it's a 2008 Greek white. It's got a nice, um, almost resiny uh, type of smell to it. Not the resiny style that you get in Retsina, but it feels like there's a, a slightly pithy um, pine resin almost edge to it. But then it's got quite a lot of plump fruit on top of it. it smells nice. Pineapples, stuff like that. It smells like it's going to be weighty but refreshing. Mm. Yeah, nice balance between uh, a refreshing, almost stony type of character um, and this quite fleshy fruit. Um, yeah, it's uh, middle of winter now. Me, me, for me, I, I think it's much more of a summer wine, but um, tasty. It's almost like there's a volcanic edge to it. Pumice stone, things like that. Next one up, um, we are heading, we're still in Europe. This is Vogelmeier Moscato Giallo. Now Vogelmeier is a vineyard, uh, Moscato Giallo is the grape. Producer is Aues Legeda. Um, so it's Northern Italian Muscat. It should be dry, I'm expecting it to be dry, 2006 vintage. Um, is that too old from Muscat? I must admit this is a wine that someone sent me, uh, it says it's in their bin end sale, so um, I'm presuming they're bin ending it because they've got younger vintages they want to, uh, they want to get through. So let's give it a, a go and see if it is too old. I mean, so there are some muskets that age brilliantly. Um, the fortified ones, I, there's, um, there's two in, in particular that stand out for me. Um, in Portugal, Portugal, they've got Moscatel de Setubal. Sorry, I spat all over myself then. And in, in the Setubal Peninsula, Peninsula is uh, just below Lisbon, and uh, they, they make some really nice muskets there. And uh, that, they, they, they make ones that are sort of like young ones, they make 20 year old reserves, and then they've, uh, they've got vintage ones as well. And I've, I've had some back from the 1880s, and they're fabulous. And I've had some muscat from way, way, way the other side of the, the world, Rutherglen in, uh, in northeast Victoria, Australia. And same thing, you've got the young, fruity ones, uh, and then you've got these ones where they've kept it, and they've kept it, and they've, they've, it's preserved, and it's almost turned to treacle over the course of 50, 80, even 100 years old. The, the really old ones, they've got tiny little barrels of them, and they, you can almost have it by the spoonful. It's like ketchup, you have to bang the barrel to, uh, to get this gloopy stuff out. But this is supposed to be on the dry, fresh end. And it smells grapey. Muscat is one of those grapes that smells grapey. Uh, it's also, it, it feels like it's got a bit of an oily spiciness, almost a bit like Gewürztramina. It does smell like it's maybe not as fresh as it should be. It's okay. It's not, um, yeah, it would have been better a couple of years ago. It's still got the, that fresh grapey fruit just about intact, but there's a more almost like a softer, more relaxed character coming through to it, which works in some wines, but I think with a wine like this, it should be all about youth and zippy fruit. And it's just a bit too Mr. Blobby for me at the moment. Mm. Fair enough. Next one. Uh, I can't remember the grape varieties I've got in this one. This is Peter Lehman's Lairs. We were talking about Australia just then. This is uh, a blend, it probably says something like a blend of premium grape varieties. If you ever see that on a bottle, blend of premium grape varieties, for me it tends to mean any old cack that we had left when we'd made our normal wines. Um, blah blah, layers of lemon, peach, dried apricot. I think I've got a bit of paper here that says what it is. Um, Semillon, Muscat. Pinot Gris, Gewurz and Chardonnay. So five different grape varieties. Does it have layers of flavour? 2009 from Adelaide. 
First thing I get is a waft of um, sulfur dioxide. I don't know if, you, if you've ever brewed, you'll know what sulfur dioxide uh, is. It's a preservative that a lot of people use uh, in the fruit business. And uh, you'll, uh, it, it, the telltale sign is when you stick your nose in here and there's almost something that catches at the back of your throat. So I'm getting that, but it, it's, it's a young wine, so it's not, it's not too much of a problem. It's, um, and particularly if it's under a screw cap. Uh, it, you almost expect it from some young wines now. Mmm, quite dumb. Really, uh, at the moment, there's not all that much character coming through. But, given that the main grape variety is Semillon, Semillon's not one of those that really bounces out of the glass uh, when it's young. And it is picking up a little bit of, um, there's a bit of floral end, uh, things like lychees, rose petals. Uh, it's almost like that Gewurztraminer is just kicking in now. Uh, some of the peachy Chardonnay maybe. Don't get much of that grapey muscat edge here, but let's have a try the tasting. Okay. Um, it's got richness, it's got this... Yeah, this peach rhubarb edge to the fruit. Um, I find it, I tried the red, uh, you might have seen it on a video I did a couple of weeks ago, and I'd, I'd say almost the same thing about it. It's not quite sure whether it wants to be uh, one thing or the other. It's not young and crisp. It's not rich and mellow. Um, it's like halfway between them. And um, yeah, again, in search of identity. That's what I said about the, the red. I'd say the same here. Okay, final wine. We've still got Semillon here. Um, we're in Bordeaux, white Bordeaux, Chateau Brown from the Pessac Léonion region of Bordeaux. It's, it's the Pessac Léonion is the best bit of the, the Grave region. Uh, and Grave, if, if you don't know the, uh, the Bordeaux, uh, Grave is the area closest to the actual city of Bordeaux. So I think it's 60% Sauvignon, 60 Sauvignon, 40 Semillon. Now, white Bordeaux, uh, there's uh, I tin, tinned pears is the thing I always get when I when I smell good white Bordeaux, and people say, "Oh no, it's fresh pears." Believe me, it's tinned pears. I can't remember the last time I had tinned pears, but there's something about that tinned pear juice character I can remember from having them at the age of eight. It's it's a young wine, 2008, so there's still quite a lot of wood here, uh, but I can smell this um, this this exotic um, pear peaches, um, yeah, the, these tinned peaches, uh, maybe a bit of guava coming through, passion fruit. And uh, the, it's, it's some, funny, sometimes you smell a wine and it smells oaky and it smells really toasty, as if someone sort of like dipped their soldiers in it. But uh, here it's more of a, a, a laid back smokiness. This is a sort of oak that I think will, over the course of time, work really nicely into the wine, integrate itself. For the moment, at, at, at least, it's a bit disjointed. Mm. It's a shame white Bordeaux isn't um, isn't better known because I think the wines um, are far more reliable than they used to be. I mean, white Bordeaux used to come with the sign "Avoid." But um, I'd say since 1990, lots and lots of uh, effort gone into um, into making the wines uh, much fresher. It's, I, I would say it were more reliable almost than white Burgundy. We yeah, are much more reliable than white Burgundy. There's some great white Burgundy, but there's also some very expensive disappointments. It's funny, white Bordeaux doesn't get the acclaim it deserves. But uh, for me, the best wines are as good as uh, some of the top end Burgundies. And at a lower level, they're more reliable. And I'm not sure of the price of this, but um, I, I like this a lot. And um, it feels like its best is still to come. It's early 2010 here. This for me has got five years at least ahead of it. And um, I like the way in which these mellow and they soften and that oak influence just gets less and less. And the wine uh, gets richness, richness, but it's also, it's also got this fresh... Um, almost marine type of grip to it. It's got, I love this, I mean, this is really classy wine. Um, good length, uh, that means, it, I, I mean I taste it for a long time, it's nothing that would end up in your spam filter, uh, but it's really, really tasty, impressive, 
classy cultured wine and I don't think I'm going to spit out this mouthful so see you soon.